<laughs> Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Tick, tock, stick, tock. The clock on the wall ticked consistently, as it's expecting. Kanji sat in her chair reading. What was she reading? One tell my guess, but she was enjoying herself. That is, until she was interrupted by Didio Kronats at the door. Start on, Tanju quickly straightened up with, with an anxious look on her face. She does not like invasion of pregnancy. The mental slug resting on the arch of her chair and quickly spun its bright high stock in the direction of the door. It was a slug with the name of Duff, and Tanji had befriended. Well, technically, rather he befriended her. Upon opening the door, Tanji was greeted by a little Cyclops girl. It was Isla Lasherton, who was no more than seven. Wait, where was it eight? Hi, Tanji, she exclaimed eagerly. I know you don't like your privacy invaded, but I just couldn't contain my excitement to show you what I found at the library. Raising the both with one hand and pinning and pointing at it with the other, he then explained a comprehensive look about slums. Oh my, replied Tanji elatedly. And I never even thought to look. That current slug on the page is Arian Rufus, the great Ben Slug, and the family of Arianidae, the Roundback Slugs. Ooh, replied Isla astonished. Me? Well, I'm glad I can make your day, pal. You did, buddy, confirmed Tanji. I don't know what to say, or how to repay you for that matter. Although there's, n oh, there's no need to repay me, replied Isla. Your happiness is enough for me. Okay, buddy. Oh, but should I, I should certainly say thank you. Advised Tangent. Right, of course, and Kurt I thought. Yeah, excuse me, called a soft voice from behind. Help no one here is afraid of snakes. Both Isla and Tangy glanced in the direction of the voice. There they saw an elegant little Lamia wearing sunglasses. She who seemed no older than Isla, but seemed rather standoffish. Tanji and Isla glanced at each other for a moment, then back to the level up now. Now, Older replied in unison. That's a relief. My name is Esther, and she replied. Esther A. Periwinkle. The A stands for Adara. One shouldn't reveal personal information, such as the middle name, addressed Tanji. But it's nice to meet you, Esther. I'm Tangela Ring. Or just Tanji for short. And this is my friend Isla Lashrithan. Technically, we're sister is your adoption. I see. Thank you, replied Esther. Well, she will run away from me. They think I'm frightened. That's absurd, remarked Kanji. Just because you have similar features to a snake doesn't make you one and the same. Just like a monkey compared to a human. You don't even crawl on your belly. Worry dirt, added Esther. These remarks not settle with Isla's understanding, but she knew that some personalities were more abstract compared to her. Exactly, concurred Tanji. Though I am curious. You do seem a bit young for Lipstein. Well, people don't actually run away from me because I'm the snake. It's my Esther. At least not in, at least not all the time. I haven't shown you my entire face. Oh, remarked Tangy and Dream. You're afraid of my... <laughs> That's why I wear these sunglasses. And it's also why I wear Lipstein. I see some Tangy. You need not worry. I, I don't care what you look like. Right, I'm not. Right, I let replied. As for me, Tanji for the remark, there's not much difficult that find in readying myself to feel content with departing from my reality. So I'm not afraid in turning the stone, nor a pillar of soul. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that, Esther replied. One of them's a myth, anyhow. True. Okay, then. Though the process made the awful times, there were some personal goals I had in mind to complete. Esther hesitantly lifted the sunglasses from her eyes, slowly, little by little, until they had been completely removed. Tanji just stood for a moment with a blank expression. As she gazed at Esther's face, sweat visibly dripping from her forehead from extreme anxiety, a smile began to spread across Tanji's face. I can see why your mother named you Esther. Because your face is beautiful. <laughs> Indeed it is, concurred Isla. Inside, Esther was crying tears of joy. 
or rather happiness. But she didn't let them show, for she did not want to embarrass herself in front of strangers. You don't need lipstick, continued Tangy, but I do think the bow was quite charming. Yes, chimed in Isla. That's why I like my mode in slay and pointing to the bow on her thin. Oh, thank you, exclaimed Esther. Thank you both so, so very much. You're welcome, they replied. It's our utmost pleasure. For a moment, Tenji's gaze turned away. This was another instant in which she realized that there's always something to be thankful for. She always dealt with self-doubt and insecurities. Whether those insecurities be about her self-image, personality, or feeling lost reporting certain actors and lines. We're needing to express her opinion of them to someone she can trust. All of this oftentimes planned her. At least she didn't have esotropia, also known as conversions to business. Esther, I'm truly deep and sorry for the scrutiny you've experienced because of your condition. There's a lot I have taken for granted, to Tanju Pensively. I once met someone who could not walk. Until I had met them, I took for granted my ability to walk. Just as I had taken for granted my ability to breathe underwater. And now, I realize I've taken my appearance from that, as well as my physical health. I have no condition I'm aware of. At least no physical condition. Thank you, replied Esther. It's been rough, but my heart's still beating. Do you mean you imply you have a non-physical type of condition? What a source of aspiration you are to keep fighting, Esther. Yes, in a way, it's actually both a blessing and a curse. Sometimes it's very beneficial and insightful. Other times it's very degrading, demeaning, and downright torturous. Either way, it never stops. At least 95% of the time it doesn't. And it constantly leads me to getting distracted, causing me to struggle to get anything done, and sometimes stub my tentacle by times a day. Oh, wow, stated Esther astonished. That does sound pretty... unpleasant. Yes, admitted Tanji. Now you know why it isn't particularly difficult for me to prepare my state of mind for impending departure. I see, remarked Esther understandingly. Now, yep, it's called introverted intuition, or NI for short. And that is how it will be until the day I draw my last breath. Which in my case would be the day the writer finishes my story. And when or if that happens depends on the will of the one who wrote the writer. He knew every writer and every story had ever been sent into motion since the beginning of time, though. Indeed, said Esther understandingly. Isla was visibly confused. Tanji, could you explain that to me later? And she asked. Of course, replied Tanji with a smile before turning back to Esther. Well, now we're left to wonder which condition would be better off to live with. The three blasts hit the ground simultaneously as they began pondering. Is it better to be Rudolph or is it better to be Ferdinand? Condition which is visible or a condition which is not visible. Either one may be met with scrutiny. However, I feel there are different pros and cons, said Tanji thinking of it out loud. The physical condition is much harder to hide, but at least it's very clear what the issue is. Thus, you may be much more likely to define acceptance. For the mental condition, there's nothing visible to be ashamed of. But the issue you have can prove difficult to make clear. With a few people being a with few people being able to relate any form of understanding. And thus, you may be much less likely to find acceptance. But hey, that's just my two cents. Whatever that terminology means. Uh, and yeah. I was said, taking in all of Tandy's logical reasoning. Hmm, but uh, Esther Ottawa, you make some very intriguing analyzations, Ted. Thank you, my friend. You're welcome. Would you like to know how my eye came to be like this? Who went up in trade form in Tandy's eyes? I had just assumed I'd been born that way. I am a tree. Okay, that had to do with an accident. An accident my mother had before I was even born. It was predicted that I wasn't even supposed to survive my birth. And neither was my mother for that matter. But she didn't even plan on having me in the first place. She didn't want me. Because that was a constant reminder of the traumatic circumstances into which I was conceived. Yes, she knew that I mattered. She knew I was a living being. 
but the negative emotion was just too great for her to bear. So, um, the doctors carefully removed my aid from my mom's womb and for it to cause any damage. It didn't want me to develop too far, as they would feel guilty eliminating me if I didn't. So, they immediately began trying to crush my egg with the hammers. Unfortunately for them, the egg I was in encased was particularly rock hard. I probably caught my mother a little discomfort. But lo and behold, midway through their hammering, they hatch. Caught a miracle, caught divine intervention. But whatever the case, my frail, fragile little body pushed its way out of that cement smear fitting. Somehow or another, it just didn't. My mother fell from passion, and upon her request, the nurses resuscitated me and suspended me in a vat of artificial amniotic fluid to complete my development. And nine months later, I long developed into a healthy lavia infant. But it is new, save a little squint. The whole of the My word, the Nastas Tandy replied that a loss of words. I know that precise extra time, my mother felt so horribly guilty for what she tried to do the week. An effect it had on my left eye. So I told her it was a half halt. I understood why she tried to do what she knew. Regardless, my mom told me that going back, she would have found another way to burst, preserve both herself and me. She insists that, if there's a will, there's a way. I for one believe she is right. Me too, the third island. Well, I'm very glad you're alive, said Tanji, trying to find the right words. And I'm glad your mother is glad as well. And I'm glad you're both alive. Uh-huh, replied Astra, nodding with a smile. Thank you. And thank you for thinking I'd not love this. You welcome, responded Tanji with slight enthusiasm. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Am, am on time. Tanji flinched back to see if he'd spurt the knifeless fate. Oh, eh uh They -huh. both Tanji before correcting herself. We were this in the eyes, or I at the beholder. Sorry, Isla. Tis awkward, she replied laughingly. An audible chuckle came from Esther as well. Turning back to Esther, Tanji student, Esther, I can easily see the purpose you were made for. Word willing, you will be a great medium eater. You will surely touch and change the hearts of many people. They think so. Indeed, I do think so. I think so too, the Green Island. Why don't you come inside, Esther? Are you hungry? I was thinking about baking some cookies. Um, all right, agreed Esther at the daughter spending time with new friends. Don't mind the gastropods having their brunch. They're my friends. Laugh and like to pay me a visit, explained Hanky. Why well, see, you like gastropod? asked Vesna. Yes, that's not surprising considering I'm a fellow mollus, but I like them not only because I can relate to them or for their appearance, but because they can detect light rather easily. And that's a good pull at it, how? To always see the lun. Ah. That is very true, replied Asher. Absolutely, the third can you. Okay, your cookies are ready, and now silo. But, it's only been roughly two and a half minutes, stated Esther Hallman. Ah, uh, closed her eye and smiled. I know. Candy smiling too, turned to Esther. She's a bit of a virtue rope, son. Oh. S pow. Esther took in the sweet, savory scent of the peanut butter cookie with her fork-like purple tongue. They smell delicious. Thank you, replied Eyelid with a muffled and appreciative voice. Her left cheek was bulging, with noticeable cookie crumbs around her mouth. They taste delicious, too. And, 